The thing that inspired me to write uh, The Mountaintop was actually a story that my mom told me when I was 10 years old. So basically, my mom grew up around the corner from the Lorraine Motel. And, you know, in 1968, she was 15 years old at the time. And she heard that Dr. King was coming to lead the sanitation workers strike. And she was just like, I have to hear this man speak. I've never been in the room with him. I've always seen him on TV, you know, being the leader of the black people. Like, I must, I must, you know, march with him. So she actually ended up um, participating in one of the marches. And that was actually a march that descended into chaos. Um, a guy who lived uh, one street over from her, Larry Payne, 16 years old at the time, he ended up being killed by police. They said he was stealing a TV, but people in the neighborhood knew that that's not what happened. Um, so, you know, there was just this like, per this, this ominous feeling that to be a part of the civil rights movement and to, you know, be an active participant uh, of change in social justice um, and, be, and being a young black person was actually a very dangerous thing. So when he came back, um, he wanted to do the march again and prove that you know these marches can be nonviolent. Um, but my mom asked her mom, can I go and hear Dr. King speak? He was scheduled to speak at the Mason Temple that night, um, April 3rd, 1968. And you know, Big Mama was like, you better sit your butt down. You know you ain't going nowhere because you know it's dangerous. People are out to get that man. And so my mother decided to, you know, heed her mother's advice and she did not go. And that became one of the greatest regrets of her life because the next day, as we all know, he was assassinated. And so my mother told me this story over and over and over again. Um, it really imprinted itself on my mind, on my heart. Um, the fact that people knew that a bullet was out for him. Um, and so as I grew older, I began to really think about, well, he must have known and really tried to um, put myself in his kind of mental state at the time. And so when I re really started concentrating on Mountaintop, there was this man named Barack Obama who was thinking about <laughs> running for the presidency. And so it just made me look back over those 40 years and, and think about how much had changed from his assassination, knowing that, you know, for the black community, so there was there had been so much progress, so much change, but also knowing that there was just there's so much work to do, um, so much injustice that as a community that we were still dealing with. And so that story that my mother had told me over and over and over again um, morphed into uh, this play called Mountaintop. I wanted to look at a king who um, was human, not lionized, not sanitized. Um, I think that's the problem with our crystallization of king in the history books. We have put him on a pedestal. And you know, you go into my grandmother's house and there's two pictures on the wall. It's king and it's Jesus. And that's what we think of him. Um, but for me, it was just really important to um, pull him down off of that pedestal, examine him, look at all the cracks and crevices that I know he as a human and also as a leader um, had. Um, but what's very interesting about the play is I also wanted to um, have him battling a protagonist slash antagonist that was um, the as equal to him, but also antithetical to him. And so I created this maid named Kame, who was named after my mother. So it was this very, um, you know, weird way to put my mother in the room with him, which she didn't get that opportunity in 1968.